What does baseball, the radio, radio station WLW in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the refrigerator have to do with this mini car called the Crosley? Well, stick around. We're going to explore the life and tragedy of Powell Crosley Jr. and take a look at a few of his cars in the Martin Auto Museum here in Glendale, Arizona. Before we go into the museum and take a look at the Crosley collection of automobiles, I thought I would give you a little background on Powell Crosley Jr., the man behind the Crosley Automobile Company. Powell's father was a prominent attorney in the Cincinnati area and encouraged Powell to go to law school. Powell did that and after a few years, he realized that law school was not for him. Dropped out of law school and went into engineering. Shortly after going into engineering and trying to get a degree in engineering, he realized he was bored with that career path also. After college, he had tried his hand in a few different enterprises, but realized that his passions were with automobiles. He even tried his hand in being a race car driver in the early 1900s, but after a bad accident, realized that this was not his career path either. After a few bad experiences with flat tires, he realized that the industry needed something to help this and developed, along with Cooper of Cooper Tires, the first inner tube to help alleviate the problem of the tires going flat. This was an immediate success and led to the creation of the American Automobile Accessory Company. They had, along with Powell's brother, Lewis, created many accessories and by the early 1920s, Powell was already a millionaire. In case you were wondering, $1 million in 1920 would be worth $15 million in 2023. The Crosleys were living very well with the earnings from the American Automobile Accessory Company. One day, Powell Jr.'s son, Powell III, was at a birthday party and came home and said, hey, the boy down the street has this really neat toy and I want to get one too. So Powell Jr. took his son, Powell III, to the store where they could buy one of these new toys. They found out what this toy was and it was a new invention called the radio. But this radio was priced at $135 in 1920. That was a lot of money and dad decided that he wasn't going to spend the money. But instead, what he did was he bought a kit to build his own radio, which was far less expensive than purchasing that radio for $135, which is about $2,100 in 2023 dollars today. Powell III didn't get his radio that day, but he was able to work with his dad and build this kit, which performed just as well for only $35. Powell Crosley Jr. quickly saw the opportunity here and realized that the majority of Americans, the common man, would not be able to afford a radio. So he got with his brother, Lewis, and they set up mass production of the radio in their automobile accessories company. And so that's where it all started. Powell Jr. was actually known as the Henry Ford of radio. This philosophy of building mass production radios for the common man served very well and the business continued to grow to where he was the largest radio producer in the world. By 1921, Powell Crosley Jr. found himself yearning to go back to his first love, which was the automobile business. That's where he applied the same philosophies for the mass-produced radio for the common man to the Crosley automobile. Building a lighter weight car 
with good fuel economy and priced at a price point where the masses could afford it, led to the birth of the Crosley Automobile Company. Let's go inside and take a look at some of these great Crosley vehicles here at the Martin Auto Museum. Nice collection here of Crosley micro cars. This is called the Super Wagon. Mini cars. Very basic. You don't see very many of these driving around. So the Crosley was built from 1939 to 1952 when they, their trend of bucking the bigger is better in the United States and building mini cars didn't take off. They didn't have enough people. Too bad they couldn't uh, stick around to the gas crunch in the 70s, but uh, Crosley, they built these cars, mini cars, up until 1952, until they finally went out of business. Unfortunately, went out of business. This is a convertible, very basic, simple car. Maybe somebody should relicense the Crosley name and try to make a go of it again. Nineteen forty-eight Crosley Super Sedan. Not a convertible. Nineteen thirty nine Crosley convertible. They're saying that this was able to get about fifty miles, fifty to forty miles per gallon back in nineteen thirty nine, and it had the entry price of three hundred and twenty five dollars for the convertible. So that's nineteen thirty nine dollars. Looks like it's had some custom paint, uh, repainted, restored. Uh, cute little convertible. Even a four seat. Cedar. Lots of room for such a small car. Crosley Farmall Road, little Jeep. 25 horsepower, three speed Warner transmission. It is not a four wheel drive. But for 1952, a little car to get around your farm. This one has some custom wheels on it. It 
said it has a traction control device that it was able to apply the brake on one wheel if it was starting to spin. And Crosley went out of business in 1952. It's one of the last vehicles built. They only sold about 250 of these. This is a cute little car, Crosley Hot Shot, 1950. Look how small that hood is. Little sedan, a little sports, sports car. Actually, no doors. Bug eye headlights. It was said by the 1950s the Crosley Automobile Company was losing a million dollars a year. Part of the problem was that the pre war engine was made out of lightweight sheet metal components as opposed to a cast iron block. That engine only weighed 60 pounds which was part of the philosophy of having a lightweight uh, vehicle with better fuel mileage. However, the sheet metal components of this engine had a tendency to corrode and gave the Crosley a reputation of not being very reliable. After World War II, with the relaunch of the Crosley brand and the Crosley automobile, came a new 26 and a half horsepower engine with a cast iron block but it was a little too late the baby boom was happening the economy was great and everybody wanted larger and bigger vehicles another innovation that turned out to lead to the demise of the crosley automobile is that Crosley was also one of the world's largest refrigerator manufacturers and had appliance stores throughout the nation. Well, Crosley automobiles were sold side by side through the appliance stores next to the radios, the Crosley radios and the refrigerators instead of being sold exclusively through a car dealership like we know today. The Crosley was the wrong car for the wrong time in the wrong place. Had it been in Europe, it might have been a different story. But for the United States, the Crosley was not a success after w World War II and closed its doors in 1952. Even though the Crosley automobile did not continue on, the legacy of Powell Crosley Jr. still lives on to this day. During World War II, Crosley switched over the production of radios to help the war effort with radios and also being accredited for building the first proximity sensor that went on bombs that would detonate the bomb before it actually hit its target for its maximum effect. Prior to World War II, Powell realized that there wasn't enough quality entertainment being broadcast on the radio. He then opened up radio station WLW, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio to this day. He began broadcasting musical programs with the first soap opera. He wanted to expand the radio's transmission power from 50,000 watts to 500,000 watts and received pushback from the federal government because such a long transmission, such a powerful transmission was unheard of in the day. Well, Powell spoke with President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and convinced him that the reach of this radio station would be vitally important to him to be able to conduct his fireside chats and have essentially everybody listen in on this in the radio in their homes, which also aided greatly with the war effort. Powell being born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, found out that the baseball team, the Cincinnati Reds, 
were up for sale and there was fear that somebody was going to buy them and move them out of state. So Powell, realizing that this would be good entertainment for his radio station, purchased the Cincinnati Reds and owned it for a number of years. Another innovation of Crosley's was lighting Crosley Field for the Cincinnati Reds for them to be able to play night games during the week when most people were at work during the day. So this expanded baseball season, expanded more games, and gave more entertainment to the masses during the week. While Powell Crosley Jr. certainly had his share of successes, he also had his tragedies in his life. During the launch of the 1939 Crosley convertible, his wife Gwendolyn finally succumbed and passed away to complications with tuberculosis. Shortly after that, in 1948, his son, Paul Crosley III, had passed away from complications of allergic reaction from a bug bite. And then after that, in 1950, his grandson, Paul Crosley IV, was killed in the Korean War in action. Paul found comfort with his beloved baseball team, the Cincinnati Reds, and passed away after a long life in 1961. Hope you enjoyed the background on Powell Crosley Jr. and the trials and tribulations that went into bringing this mini car to the market. I hope next time you see one of these cars that you'll have an understanding and remember what a great man Powell Crosley Jr. was and what he did to help bring radio, entertainment, and transportation to the common man. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up, and I will see you on the next video.